Hello. How are you doing? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Wherever you are joining us today, I'd like to welcome you to the Quilters Playcation Adventure Sew Along 2024 Rainbow Edition. Jazz hands. You know I love me my jazz hands. Did I ever tell you that I did jazz dance when I was a little girl? I think I was five or six when I quit because there was some drama at the dance studio and I was accused of causing it and I had nothing to do with it. Um, and the fact that my teacher accused me, I wouldn't back down from it, um, made me so angry that I quit. And I never did jazz dance again or ballet for that matter. <laughs> um, I did do Ukrainian dance, but that was at a different place. So I did Ukrainian dance until I was like 14 or something like that. And then some adult ballet classes a few years ago. The extent of my da my dance experience. So that's all I know about jazz hands. My son is a dancer when he's well, but he does not do jazz. He's ballet. I don't know how to hold my hands for ballet. Anyways, <laughs> I digress. I'm a little giddy. I couldn't sleep last night. Um, love that perimenopausal insomnia. So yeah, was not sleeping last night. Uh, so I'm probably a little bit loopy, giddy today. It is Tuesday, May 7th. I am coming to you from the basement in blustery Calgary. It feels like Nova Scotia weather out there. It's like blustery, misty, rainy. Um, I'm loving it. I love this weather. Nobody else does, but whatever. That's okay. I have not one, but two kids home. Yay. Um, my middle one is just got a cold and she's at the already bored on day two phase of needing rest. So she's upstairs cooking some kind of potato puff thing and, um, some buns. So I'll take it. I'll take it. She's still resting from school and from sports. So we'll take the cooking. Um, yeah, that's what's going on. What's going on with all of you? Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm excited that you're here. We have week 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I had to count because I couldn't remember. Week 18 of the Quilters Playcation Adventure Sew Along. We're going to fill this spot right here over my shoulder. And you can look at the quilt. So you know that means it is one that's going to have no background in it. Um, I have made this version, so let me show it to you. Right, straightforward block here. We're assembling it in thirds. Um, so we're going to start with some rectangles. We're going to layer our cuts and just do one column at a time or row, depending on how you want to go. Um, with it. So just kind of a straight forward, I'm going to call this slash block. This is a slashed block. Um, I did get a sort of similar idea, but I think I'll do something else with it down the line. Just wait and see, right? Creativity begets creativity. So I had the idea for this simple block, gave me an idea for at least one more, maybe two, three, who knows? We'll see where it goes from there. So let's get to sewing and we'll see what happens. So bring you over here. We will flip the camera around. Oh, there's the ladies. Got to say hello to the ladies. And then we will adjust this down. There we go. Got it a little bit more sorted today. Part of my finger to get us on the cutting table. So it's a pretty straightforward block. I think I say that every week, but <laughs> some more than others, probably. We're gonna start with uh, a bunch of rectangles of our rainbow fabrics. You want them to be a little bit more than halfway um, of your height of your block. Typically you might be making a square block. That's what I've been teaching, but that doesn't mean you're limited to making a square block. So you're going to want these to, you know, be an inch or two or even more 
um, taller than half of the height of your block. And as for the width, think about your block, you're doing it in thirds. So I start with this about a little bit more than a third of the width. Um, again, give yourself some wiggle room. The more wiggle room you have, the more we can play with angles. Uh, and you know that we will use the scraps. We will definitely be using the scraps. So you have to decide what order you want them in. It's kind of like a three in the bottom, three across the top scenario. If we go sort of straight rainbow order, right, right, left to right, we might look like this, right, where we're going to start pairing it up. We can mix things up. Um, how did I do it on the original one? The original one, I kind of did this sort of rainbow order. So it kind of went one, two, three, four, like that. So a different kind of impact there. I'm just looking at what I have on the wall already and how I might kind of want to split that up um, in there. We could just go random too, right? We might go random. I'm feeling random a little bit. Right, just to change things up. A little bit the last block was random too but um yeah i think i'm gonna go random why not why not so we're gonna work in pairs pretty straightforward you might have some pieces that are wider than others like i do here you can trim off that whole sort of excess width we're gonna end up trimming some of these off and i think i just will just to make it a little bit easier to work with. That's a usable scrap, so I'm going to keep it. Um, so we have our three pairs. I'm keeping them all out because I'm going to kind of cut them all at the same time. So what we're doing is we're going to layer these right sides up so that they overlap. See how I've got kind of a little bit of overlap? You just want to make sure you're not overlapping them so much that you will be shorter than the height of the block that you want, right? Um, I'm overlapping. I have way more than I need here. I'm going to be totally honest, uh, but I am going to overlap, you know, just a little bit so that I can cut my angle. Now, like any other time where we're layering right sides up and we're cutting, I do want to kind of flip back, make sure I've covered in this top corner, right? If I had layered here, Look at that. I'm going to be cutting where I have no purple, right? None of this, the fabric that's underneath. So I need to kind of adjust where the ruler is going to go to make sure. And so you can adjust your angle and where it is. So I'm going to go that way and I'm going to do a quick layer. Oops, sorry, I forgot to turn my external notifications off. So I'm going to discard these pieces below or these extra ones, oh, some good scrap options there, right? And that's going to be my first sort of slash. And I'm going to do the same thing to my other ones. They don't have to be at the same angle by any stretch of the imagination. You can play around with where they are. You know, maybe you want less of an angle or more of an angle. I'm just going to have fun with it see what comes up right there's the second one and then this third one you know I don't have as much of the yellow my yellow one is a little bit smaller so I just wanted to make sure there we go so I have all of these cut and ready to sew right we're gonna go one two three I'm gonna chain piece these um, which means I'll sew this seam so a couple of stitches then sew this one so a couple of stitches of nothing then sew this one it's pretty straightforward when we go to sew right we cut them right sides up 
we are going to sew right sides together. The only thing you want to keep in mind when you are sewing these layered angle pieces, pieces is you don't want to have, let me bring this up here, you don't want to have sort of point on edge of fabric. Why is that, Cheryl? Well, if I sew there, when that is sewn up, it's actually going to fold up to be more like this. Right? And then I'm going to end up trimming off all of this piece now. I probably will end up trim off some, but I want to give myself as many options. So I'm going to actually bring the point of that top piece over so that when it gets sewn and folded up, I'm going to have more of a straight line sort of here. Obviously, I'm just kind of showing you freestyle right here, but just think about having sort of about a quarter of an inch on this corner here. And then the same thing ends up happening on the other side. Okay. Pretty straightforward once you understand that. Of course, I unthreaded my machine because it didn't have my little spider in the machine and I thought I was holding my threads, but clearly not well enough. So we'll try that again. No big deal. I'm not gonna move the camera. You don't need to see me So, Well, actually you might wanna see this go into the machine. Hold on a second. There we go. So remember, I have that overlap. I'm going to come in and put my needle right at that intersection, more or less. Hold the threads better this time. And just go down with a consistent seam allowance. Don't stress if it's not some kind of perfect quarter inch. It's not a big deal. Okay. Same thing with my other ones. See, I'm only worrying about getting it in the machine like that, and then I'll get the rest of this lined up. You can go ahead if you're more comfortable and get that pinned in place beforehand. I'm a little more of a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. All right. Let's get this last one in. Okay, we'll get to the end. I will put a spider in this time. Trim that off. And then I've got these three pieces and you just need to give them a press. So I'll take you over to the iron here and the pressing mat. Hey Cheryl, what direction should I press that seam in? Doesn't really matter. Pick one and go with it. Um, on the previous block, I did press down because um, my darker fabrics were on the bottom. But you could press up, you could press open, whatever you're wanting to do. So there's the first one. I don't even remember which one I had on top now. Do I have green or pink on top? Anyone remember? Well, it's gonna be pink now. Right, because it's the same angle. I think I had the pink on the top, or bottom, I mean. And this one, I'm pretty sure I had the blue on top. There we go. Pretty straightforward for that first round. Let's go back over to the cutting mat we got to think about sort of block assembly now that we have our three strips together and we'll go from there so my initial block assembly idea right is to have all the angles going in the same direction right sort of high on the left low on the right doesn't mean you have to 
kind of stay that way. Although, we'll see, when you flip, it's the same. It doesn't mean I have to keep things in the same order that I cut. Maybe I want to switch it up, do something like that. Right? I kind of actually like the idea of the purple in the middle because the purple is usually on one of the ends. The pink is usually on one of the ends, but you know, you can't win them all. But do I want like that? Kind of like that warm there, or do I like the warm going like that? I'm going to stick with this. Okay. Before you do anything, I just have them butted up next to each other. I just want to measure my width. See how much wiggle room I have. Obviously, I'm going to lose some to trimming and seam allowances. Um, but if I was really close at this point, I might make a fourth pair uh, and, you know, play up with some of the other colors and add it in if I ended up making these quite narrow. But it also lets me know how much wiggle room I have. Because to assemble it, I want to do that same kind of layered angle thing again. I want to put them on top of each other and cut and see what happens. So obviously it's not going to be as strong of an angle as we had, um, but it's there. Now, one of the fun choices is do I want to continue with the same angle that I have or do I want to go the opposite? And I kind of like the opposite. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, I'm layered right sides up. I can see kind of where the corner is of what's underneath so that I make sure I'm covered on both sides. You can always flip this back and double check, but I can see. So I'm going to cut through both of them when they're sitting here right sides up. And I'm going to go ahead and now that it's been cut, flip it over. Obviously, I don't need the piece that was underneath. And I'm going to go ahead and give that a sew and then a press. And then I'll add that last one. A little bit of a longer seam, but still a plain straight seam. Nothing very exciting about that one. <laughs> All right, again, pressing directions entirely up to you. Um, whether you go to one side or the other or press it open. Maker's choice. It's not really gonna make a difference in the block. Okay. Now, you'll notice, like I didn't trim these before because I know I'm giving everything a fresh cut as I decide how to assemble this block. So I'm going to go ahead and layer this so that I can add the same thing. But before I make that last cut, again, I want to double check. Will I have width if I do that? If I join there, it's going to shrink a little bit. You know, I'm getting a little bit close, but I'm just going to give myself a touch more wiggle room. This one won't be as strong of an angle. Obviously, the wider you make each one of these components, the more wiggle room you have for this assembly of the columns, right? You can play with a stronger angle when you go to assemble it. Okay, let's sew this last seam, give it a press, and then we'll square up. Hey, let me press that, folks, and then we can look at the whole block. I'm going to press all of these vertical seams in the same... Oh, there's two of them. <laughs> I'm pressing them in the same direction, right? So they're, in my case, they're all going to the left. Go to the right, compress them open. Like I said, maker's choice. 
Okay, give your block a really good pressing. And there we have it. I'm gonna double check. Make sure I am wide enough. Oh yeah, just. Just because I need 10 and a half inches. So I'm just wide enough. I was worried it was a little bit short um, in there. But if you have a lot of width, you can play around with where you place your ruler on it. But I'm just going to go kind of straightforward. I do have choice on how vertical, where I want to kind of cut it. I'm actually, I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. I'm going to go there. So remember that hang loose to hold the ruler. That way my thumb, and you can see over there, my pinky are holding the ruler in place and then my fingers are gripping it. Left-handed folks, you're going to go that way and then grip. Hold my ruler in place and trim. I didn't lose much on that side. Now that I've cut those two sides, I'll flip it around. Now I can mark this on the 10 and a half and the 10 and a half here. And then again, hold my ruler in place. And trim. And there we have it. There is our block for today. We're calling it Slash. I played with the layout. It's not my pure rainbow order. Um, I kind of really like the pink and the purple next to each other because they don't get to play next to each other very often in the quilt. Um, so that's kind of fun um, there. And just sort of another interesting dynamic to the block. So let's turn you around. Well, there's my Halifax map. See, I said it feels like a Halifax day. Say goodbye to the ladies and we'll turn you around. Hi. <laughs> so let's fill this spot over my shoulder with the block. There we go. I think she plays nicely with everything else. Right, you can see the more controlled color scheme going on down here versus the random one I went with up here. It's a really nice balance to the block above and beside it there. Um, so I'm really happy with how that came to be. I have no idea what we'll do next week. We'll see. I'll leave this up here for a few days, get an idea, play around and see what happens. So that folks is week, what did I say? 14, 18 <laughs> of the Quilters Vacation Adventure So Along 2024 Rainbow Edition. Uh, another fun week. They all are. Really? Come on. You get to hear about my dance history. I won't dance for you. Um, I would say I'm a bar dancer, but I don't even go to the bar anymore. So I'm a kitchen dancer. That's what I am. I'm fantastic in my kitchen. I'm going to go with that. I will. Um, I hope you all have a great week. What do we have going on here? Um, oh, it's Mother's Day this weekend. I kind of always forget about it. Um, my family's usually quite nice, but... It's not really a big deal to me. Um, and after a couple years ago, I think my mother-in-law was down and my husband insisted on us going out for brunch. And I told him afterwards, I'm like, never again, because that was really annoying. Um, there's just a lot of people and a lot of people trying real hard, um, which was fantastic. Um, and my family was trying hard, but um, I have often said that my perfect Mother's Day would be for you to all clean the house and then leave and leave me alone in the house that's clean so I don't feel the need to do it. That's kind of my dream Mother's Day. But, you know, we don't always get what we want. So I think it'll just be another weekend and that'll be that. Uh, we will be celebrating my daughter because she turns 16 in a week. Can you believe it? Um, 
yeah, she turns 16 next week. So um, we'll be celebrating her a little bit on the weekend as well. Anyways, that's all from me, Cheryl Arkison, your host on this adventure so along for week 18. I'm so glad that you could be here. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week and we will see you online. Remember to give yourself a hashtag if you post anything from um, whether you make today's block or any other block. Um, remember to use the hashtags Quilters Placation, QP Adventure Sew Along, or QP Adventure Sew Along uh, 2024. Um, I welcome all the posts and that way we can all see them uh, and really enjoy them there. So have a great week, folks. I'm Cheryl Larkison. We'll see you next time.